this computer. Okay, cool. So we are recording now. Welcome everyone to the JS, JS Core Dev uh, Weekly Sync Up. Um, I'll be the lead for today. Do we have any volunteers to be the note taker? <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, I'll give you an award at the end of the quarter <laughs> for being the most amazing note taker. Uh, thank you so much. Cool. Okay. So as you all know, we always do a round of updates. We think we have done. We are blocked in what we plan to do next. Um, we have some people missing today, but I shared the update with uh, us and I'll just like go through it quickly. So I'm first on the list. If you haven't shared your update, please add it to the quick path. Um, I'm first on the list and it's actually what I've been, I've been like pretty busy because my head is getting even more split than usual. Um, and so I have created a module uh, called package table and package table is essentially just like grabs a list of JSON and, and, and I convert it to a markdown table that then presents like which packages are used by a project and list CI and coverage and other things that we want. Uh, fortunately, I then had help from Enrique, which took it to the next level. And now we are using it for, uh, instead of like repeating code, we are using it for JSAP Pass, JSAP Peer to Peer, uh, JSAP LD, and also go to peer, peer go IPLD, and go IPFS. So now like all of these projects are using this like way to present like which, where is the code base? Like where are the modules? So that's pretty cool. Um, I reviewed, like discussed and reviewed the work plan for JSAPFS.io, like that website as a whole, like there's still some missing features that we wanted to have on the, the website of the project. Uh, and they should be delivered by the end of September. So like end of the quarter. Really exciting, uh, and also like groomed the waffle boards. Like uh, the waffle boards needed some love, so I just like went and like started leaving all the issues. You might have gotten a lot of notifications from me. Um, and as I said, like my my availability right now to dedicate to the JS project um, is is like has decreased a little bit. So really, like ping me directly if I'm blocking you because like that that is not okay. So it's just like ping me directly. Uh, I'm trying to keep up. And, and pay attention to everything, but I, I might slip something. So if you need the pull request review, like an architecture rock review or some other thing, just, just let me know. For this week, I, I want to have a lot of time to like dedicate, like I might get to do some stuff, but I'm not like promising anything because uh, again, my time is limited and I'll be out for the week after. Um, actually from September 3rd to September 10th. And, and I'm asking at the end of this uh, crit belt if someone is um, available to be the lead of this call. I see that like Alan already volunteered for September 10. If someone wants to lead for September uh, 3rd, just like uh, add your name there on line one to five. And that's it for me. Any questions? Cool. All right. So next up we have Alan, which is not here. Um, he's on holiday. It's yeah, and so there's like a, okay, there's a lot of things happening here on files and like uh, releasing just IPFS 31.7, that's exciting. Um, let's make sure like, to give feedback to Alan when we pull request the, the notes to the, to the PM repo. And like, if you have a question for him, you can just like tag him on your comment. Jacob, you're next. All right. Uh, how did you do? Um, so I've got peer and content routing working. Um, it's pretty much done. There's some outstanding pull requests right now. I'm working on the example of that. And so if I find anything um, as I'm going through the example, then I'll make some tweaks to the open PRs for that. Um, I released a fix for IPNS. There was a security issue. Uh, public key validation wasn't happening properly because the callback expects provides a Boolean and that wasn't being checked. Um, so that's now fixed, and we also submitted an NPM security advisory for that. Um, DHT, we've got a PR for um, encoding logs to kind of improve logs for users. Um, and we also added a ticket for just improving, changing that over to CIDs in the future, because right now it's using buffers for all the keys. Um, so the goal there is to switch all that over to CIDs so that we can future-proof that a little bit better for migrations. Um, some other stuff around the DHT routing, or sorry, on the around content routing. Um, also finalized some 
some language around libp2p using bundles instead of factory for the libp2p um, custom bundle pull request. So that should allow us to use functions. So I think that should make it out in the next um, minor release of IPFS. And then I'm slightly blocked on one PR for delegate content routing. Um, there was DHT interface wasn't compliant, so it was not accepting a timeout, and that makes that really annoying for in the delegate routing to allow multiple modules. Because um, right now in the libp2p for delegate routing, you can specify multiple modules so you can have a delegate router and a DHT, and the DHT will get prioritized. But if we're trying to, if, if the interface doesn't match, then that's super annoying. So got a PR for that. Um, and then the Go IPFS updates, which will hopefully get done in the next couple of weeks. And then this week I'll be working on finalizing the delegate routing example, um, the state machine updates, and I will probably sync up with Vashko on some IPFS configuration updates um, for better Go interoperability. I think that is it. Anybody have so, any questions? Yeah, I do have a bunch. Um, sweet, excellent update. When you mean peer, co peer and content routing uh, is pretty much done, you mean the delegated version or the full version? Yes, the delegated version. Got it. Um, when, when you say that like you're blocked on the delegated rot content routing PR about the interface that is missing, you are blocked on like a pull request review or, or the maintainer of the module? Uh, so I'm maintaining that. It's just a pull request review. Okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah. Now that Vashko's back, I'll probably also ping him because I know you're super busy. Um, so I'll reach out to Vashko for that. So don't feel obligated to that, David. Sweet. Okay. Uh, I'll try to look at it. Uh, but yeah, like if we, we can share that, that's great. Uh, on the Go IPFS, I, it was my understanding that we already had delegated endpoints available in infrastructure. At least there was like some tests like three months ago. Perhaps they are not well documented. And so, um, yeah, like, did you get back from the infrastructure team? Like, if there yeah, was so it used to be deployed, but then it was taken down. Um, uh, and so I think we're just waiting on that. There needs some fig configuration stuff that they need to do on the IPFS side so that it's not always turned on for every node. Um, and so they want to, to finalize that. So Lars is looking at that, but probably won't have, I think early September he'll have, he said he'll have time to look at that. So. Sweet. Okay. Understood. Understood. Okay. Um, yeah, perhaps like it makes sense to actually create nodes on the infrastructure just for this purpose as we have the preload nodes. Maybe we have like the delegation <laughs> nodes uh, so that we, we know uh, what we are pointing to. Yeah. Um, do you have any, uh, do you have any demos or are, are you waiting to get like all of this deployed so that you have the, the full shiny demo with it working with the actual infrastructure. Yeah, so I'm gonna get the example going so that I can at least get a demo of that going locally and then I'll probably do a more full-blown demo once that's out in the wild. Sweet, all right, cool, that's, that's it for me. Any other questions to Jacob? All right, I don't see any hands. Uh, thank you so much. Cool, Vashko, you're next. Hello, so I've been uh, in holiday in the last two weeks, so I have nothing relevant uh, in the done. Uh, blocked, I have uh, currently three PRs related to IPNS. When it's the main implementation for GSIPFS, I had some reviews of uh, Alan. I hope uh, it will be merged uh, really soon. And I have uh, other two about the interop tests of uh, IPNS and the repo. Uh, so next, I want to have all those uh, IPNS-related uh, PRs merged, and uh, I'm also f and I also need to fix a bug in IPFS API related to the interface IPFS core tests for IPNS, and uh, then I also need to check all the requests that I have, like PRs and issues on the repos which I have uh, lead maintainer. I received lots of mails, so. I will to go through them all. And I also want to get an initial implementation of IPNS over PubSub. And, and then I will also be available for helping Jacob. Sweet, and awesome. It will be there. Thank you, thank, thank you for the update. Any other things? Sorry, I thought you had, had finished. Okay. I'm finished. Uh, yeah, thank you. So question is, 
um, when you say you are blocked, I, I just like open one of the PRs, like the interrupt one. It seems like you actually created this pure request. You are just blocked on like someone reviewing and merging. Is that correct? Uh, the repo, yes. The, the other one, the, the one for the IPNS needs the, the GSIPFS to be merged to then update and the interrupt be reviewed afterwards. Okay. Can, can you like uh, add a comment to the deadline saying what is missing? Like if it's free, like merge and release, if it's or if it's actually like a, a bigger problem, uh, okay. it helps me to then like route properly, make sure like if it's just a review, then like it's very easy to open, like go to the code. If it requires more, like if it requires design work or writing code, then, then it's a whole other story. So I'm just like trying to make sure I know exactly how you're blocked so that I can help you. Okay, I will update now. Sweet, thank you. All right, um, Hugo, you're next. Or does anyone ask questions for Vasco? Sorry. I don't see any hands. Uh, Hugo? Hey guys, so I opened an issue regarding the, the daemon on JSIPFS um, because um, as we have right now the, the JSIPFS site, the, especially the, the getting started section, all the steps there um, allow a new user to get started and stuff like that, but one of the steps, uh, the, C, the CLI, is missing one step as the um, repository is now in master. Uh, I'm almost sure that this wasn't the case a couple of weeks ago, um, but that um, as you will see in the, in the issue, uh, basically if you want to get, do an IPFS get or get whatever, you need to have a daemon uh, running already. And so either we start a node in the CLI path, code path, uh, to not need the, the daemon uh, started manually, or we just need to <coughs> change the, the, the getting started uh, and the, the steps for the CLI. Uh, so please go, to, go there and give your feedback around that, that issue. Uh, also, I um, almost finished setting up the, the, the tests. I had everything related to the, the, the tests, the big data tests, everything related to Node. Um, first, uh, adding in multiple ways, then adding in one way and getting in multiple ways. Um, and also started integrating everything I did in the last quarter about uh, the same thing, but in the browser. Uh, but um, in the middle of it, I, st um, I stopped to improve how the, this stuff would be run and added some environmental bars. Uh, but that I uh, by doing that, I realized that I needed to change some of the repo handling so we can like specify where the repos goes, where the repo goes, because this stuff gets needs to be like in the external hard drive or something like that. Uh, so I stopped the, the, the browser part and finished and refactored a little bit how the repo configuration <coughs> is done. So I can release to the, this repository and get your feedback. Uh, and I'll finish the, the browser stuff uh, later. So basically I'm just about to finish uh, this little refactor and uh, the, the repository will go to GitHub uh, and then I'll finish also the, the tests and one issue I found with the uh, CTL um, being that the init and start uh, methods in the API uh, kind of don't match the behavior documented in the, in the readme. Um, so uh, I'll be fixing that too in the next week or this week. Any questions? Sweet. Uh, I do have a couple. Um, the yeah, on the first issue, like it is also unclear to me um, because like CoIPFS is also very like quantum in that sense. Like sometimes it starts the daemon internally. Sometimes it tells you the daemon is offline, so you cannot cap the file. Um, and, and so this is like more of like a, an IPFS design decision, like IPFS UX design decision. We want to st start a daemon 
in the background for users or do we want just to tell them, hey, like your daemon is running offline. And so we are just like checking whatever it's here. And if you want to turn the daemon online, just start the daemon. Um, so yeah, like I invite everyone to like comment on that, that issue that uh, Google linked here, uh, issue 15, 27. Um, because it's an open question on on the part of like like point like changing the path where the ripple gets created like there is an environment variable called ipfs path um setting this should give you the way to change where the ripple gets initiated and and stored so doing ipfs path uh equals some some, some path right some path ipfs daemon or just ipfs daemon um should make sure that, that like your daemon now runs over an IP, like a, a repo that is not on dot JSIPFS, but that's on that path. So so I'm not sure like, if the recommendation is missing or if you went away. Uh, but uh, it, like what I'm trying to say is like th there is a way to unblock you. Like you should not have to like refactor the entire code base to to like do this. Yeah, sure. it's it's just uh, um, well, when you see the repo, you um, understand. Because there are several, several, several uh, paths that I need to set. Um, I need to set like uh, the node that I have the, the, the data needs to be pointed to one folder. The the node that gets the data needs to be pointed to another folder. And also in the browser, when I start the Puppeteer to start up the Chrome, yeah. I need to change change the folder where the IndexedDB gets stored. So there, there are a couple of uh, paths that I, that I need to, to handle. Uh, and it's just a, li a little bit of uh, refactor to everything is uh, clear and easy to change. So it can be uh, flexible and don't, don't, don't get. And basically uh, what I changed mostly was like uh, changing uh, CTL to use uh, non-disposable instead of disposable. Um, and yeah, but it's it's yeah, it's almost finished. It's nothing major. Just a, a little thing about being flexible and be, having the a clean code base. It's not like right. I was blocked in that. Got it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, I just want to make sure you knew about that that environment variable. Um, I don't have any other questions. Uh, any questions for Google? Cool. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have 10 minutes left. Uh, still four, three updates to go. Um, let's go next to Travis. Hello. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, we can. Um, awesome. So I got a uh, the IPDB JS browser implementation uh, has a working working implementation that works actually surprisingly well and allows you to use the uh, Go IPFS COI and communicate with a JS IPFS daemon run in a browser, which is kind of awesome. Um, so there's a, a link there to that PR. I need uh, I need someone to review. Um, I got caught up a little bit at the end of the last week, so I wasn't able to uh, try and find someone. Uh, but I have a general approach uh, that I would be interested in if someone wants to kind of just kind of look over uh, and see if it seems reasonable. Um, it's pretty flexible. Uh, so. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good start. Uh, the, the next, I guess, bit to finish off the, the LKR is to actually figure out a way to build integration testing against uh, the different implementations and, and where we want to run those tests um, and how, how we want them to be ran. So i uh, going to probably open an issue for that, probably, I guess, in the JS IPFS repository. Uh, and then we can start a discussion on how we want to actually have uh, these these tests run to show the the uh, cross implementation integration. This is pretty cool. Like I, I'm exciting. Uh, it, I'm excited. This is exciting. Um, do you have any? Like I see that is a demo script and output. Do you have any video demo that people can like, check out? It's working and like running through some tests um i i had i had one that's i have that that uh that, that script i ran uh, i had a really early precursor <laughs> uh 
term, uh, ASCII cask or whatever. Um, but I, I have to go find the URL back in IRC. Um, I'll, I'll update the issue though, or I'll, I'll make a new one actually, because that was really clunky that, that shows it. Um, it. It's, it's a little lackluster because you, there's no way to tell whether you're actually talking to a browser JS IPFS statement or just a JS IPFS statement. Um, but it, uh, it works. <laughs> Interesting. Awesome. Cool. Um, while uh, perhaps like the reason why you didn't get feedback so far, I just noticed that like IPTV was w not one of the repos that like the JavaScript team had access. And perhaps like no one like got the ping. So I just like added the JavaScript team to this repo as well. So now you can like just ask for reviews directly to, to all of these folks. Um, yeah. Oh, nice. This, okay. This is like super exciting. I, I really look forward to IPTV to do a lot of like the interoperability testing. Uh, thank you so much. Any questions yep. for Travis? All right, I guess this is it. Uh, Machi, you're next. Um, so, uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, so, uh, I've uh, added the requested changes to the uh, PR for using pre generated peer IDs in JS IPSD CTL. And now I'm waiting for a review of that. I also have two other PRs open that uh, have been um, sitting there and uh, nothing was uh, really done about them. So one is uh, this AGR change that checks for unused and missing dependencies. I've applied the changes that were requested but uh, haven't really received an update on that. Uh, also, I have uh, rewritten WebRTC star um, to use another module for exchange of the WebRTC messages. And I have also demoed that a few weeks ago on an all hands call. I have also haven't received an update about that and would like to get some news about whether this is going to be merged or not. Yeah, got it. Thank you for the update. I think like a couple of the um, pull requests is submitted. Yeah, like let's get the generated pre ID as fast as possible because like that that is a huge speed boost. Um, I saw that there was like some some I, I commented it on it today and apparently there was like some things missing that like got done also today. So awesome. Perhaps like one of us will have the, the time to do the review and merge. Um, on the WebRTC um star uh revamp i still need like to dig through more of that the the, the feedback i have right now is that i see that like you created a new interface data exchange which which is like adding another type of like module to leap peer to peer which is not necessarily something that we like we have designed for or that we have thought through well like i i understand like it was like an experiment that you did and it's awesome so uh, we really need to understand like what is this new type of like data exchange model for with peer to peer? Is it needed? Is there a, any other way, or or is just like something very custom for this use case? And, and so because there is a lot of like thinking to be done there, like the the feedback might take a little bit more time because everyone is just like super focused on the uh, objectives and key results that they have for this quarter, and also like on the last week, some people have like taking holidays. So so sorry, apologies for like the delay there, but but it really requires some 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 deep thinking for, for that one. Any any other questions or uh, do you have any follow up comment, Machi? Um yeah so two things. First one a uh, data exchange basically um tries to put what socket IO does currently in WebRTC star into a module that it works over existing connections as well as uh, non-existing connections like over socket IO. And also I forgot to mention there is also another PR for JS P2P crypto, which uses a URLs uh, optional module. And uh, there seems to be uh, a problem with tests failing on Windows, but as I do not have any idea about Windows, I would need some help about getting that fixed because I don't really use Windows, so. Got it. Cool, yeah, I add that to the list. The two people to ping about Windows are Dominic, 
Uh, he's mostly focused on Go IPFS, but he can give you a bunch of tips. And also Enric, which is a JS developer, but uh, on the Windows platform. So he knows how to get around. Um, I believe like the uh, URSA is to speed up like the key generation. That's correct? Uh, yes, I'm using a native module instead of a node forge. Got it. And there is an automatic fallback to node forge if the native module fails, but on Windows for tests, it also tests with the native module and force, so it fails. Interesting. Okay, definitely add this to the list and then we, we can ping Dominic and Eric to see if they can give you a hand. Or anyone else that has experience with Windows and wants to check it out. Um, cool, any other questions to Matthew? I don't see any hands. Okay, last but not the least, John. Hi, John. Good to see you here. You want to share Hello. with us your update? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Perfect. Good. So I've just been, in addition to looking at research papers and emailing professors, I've also been looking at the code and trying to just see, you know, how it's structured and kind of get up to speed on the interfaces and so forth for eventually doing more intensive DHT rework. But one thing I did discover, there's an issue I linked in the, um, in the notes that with JS IPFS, if you start, if you try to add a file immediately after the, node is ready, the DHT doesn't have any nodes. So it basically gets not advertised to anyone. But I'm not sure where that should be fixed, if this is an IPFS issue or a libp2p issue, if there should be queuing of data that should be sent to the DHT. Uh, I'm not sure you know, what the clean fix for this is, but at least there's a problem. Yeah, yeah, I, I get get your question. Um, I think I thought a little bit about it, which means I need to think more. And other people should like voice their opinions too. But like, I think what needs to happen is just like when a node boots up, there should be some grace mm -hmm. period that like every provide uh, call um, like just like, just understands that like the DHT is still like warming up, and so yep. there should be like instead of like the reprovide being twelve hours it should be maybe like two minutes for the first half an hour or something while, while it warms up. And after it is warmed up, then, then like move the reprovide um, function to, to 12 hours again. Sounds reasonable, yeah. So, but, but again, this is like my little thinking. Like, let's definitely yeah. follow up on the issue. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just wanted to, that was, it. I mean, that JS IPFS does actually seem to be advertising files if I wait for the node to warm up. Which is awesome. We just need to get the interrupt right so that Go and JS I can be happy friends on DHT. <laughs> well, I was I was getting the pulling the data out with Go on the same, so it's sort of working. I don't know. Interesting. Okay, that's great because we haven't really tested it again. There was a lot of like interrupt fixes on the streaming, the stream multiplexer. So probably you are the first person to actually test it because everyone has been so busy. So that's a <laughs> that's a great news. <laughs> you, sh you should record a demo. <laughs> oh my, it's just working so that everyone gets convinced it works. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. I really need to now stop the call because we have a hard stop. Well, one minute to go. Uh, the Go IPFS one is, or the Go Core Dev one is going to start, and, and I need to be there to open it up. So I don't see any more. Well, um, yeah, I don't see any more updates. It seems we got the volunteers for the next two uh, weekly sync ups. And yeah, thank you all for coming and for your updates. See you around on the interwebs. Bye-bye. <laughs>